What's up guys, welcome back to A Trucker's Life. My name is Jorge Navarro. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've already been subscribed, welcome back guys. And we are in Sanford, North Carolina. Just got through getting unloaded. Another one of those situations. Ooh, another one of those situations where miscommunication a little bit wasn't terrible like it was uh, the last load but still miscommunication my BOLs were saying that I had hi yeah my BOLs were saying that I had to be here at 8 a.m. and uh, so I was here I was here last night matter of fact and uh, waited for the morning, went up there, checked in, and uh, the gentleman uh, that, that received me, cool guy, he said that he had a meeting he had to go to, and uh, so it was going to be about an hour, I'm like, good, cool, whatever, and then uh, he's like, as soon as I'm done, I'll unload you, and that was good, no biggie, right? So um, he told me to park at a different spot, I parked, I moved around to a different location, and then he came out about an hour, you know, about, about an hour later. Oh, Edel Block. Pretty cool. There's an Edel Block shop right here to the, to the side here. But anyways, so um, he said, uh, you know, it took an hour. He came out and he's like, uh, can you please uh, straighten out? I need to unload the truck behind you because actually in reality, your appointment was not until, let's see. Your appointment is not until uh, one in the morning. I mean, one in the morning, eleven a.m. And I'm like, okay, that's that's weird. So I looked at my paperwork because I knew it said eight a.m. Because our, our our company gives us our own paperwork, which they call it a DR. Um, I don't know what other companies call it, but that's what they call it. Um, that's our own BOL. And. Um, a little bit about that here in a little bit about our, our own BOL or your own company's BOL okay anyways so we we ended up uh, you know it's at 8 a.m. and um, he said no I can't unload you until 11 because that's the schedule what can you do you can't sit there and argue with the guy the guy was pretty cool so I mean it is what it is I just hung out there for another uh, couple hours so uh, he got a he got unloaded uh, matter of fact it was a Dana truck he unloaded the Dana truck took two hours came out and got me um, again, real cool guy got me back in. We uh, he hooked everything up because just like anything else, I mean, just like most of our places, you know, they do all the work. We just basically just kind of assist them on the connections, and after that, then they take uh, in charge, and they'll tell you either to get out, get out, and hey, go to your truck, or you can sit sit out there with them. And uh, but more likely, they like you to get out. Now, here's a question I have for some of you guys. That are, that are truck drivers. I don't know if you guys, um, whenever they relieve you of your duty like that, what do you do? Do you go to sleep at work? Do you go on duty? Do you go off duty? Do you continue doing on duty, on duty offloading? Um, what what do you guys do? This company wants us to remain on duty the whole time. Um, I know that I think the law, if I'm not mistaken, is that you can you can log it um, off duty. I mean, a sleeper berth. And go into the sleeper and go to sleep if you've been relieved of your duties. That means that the, the, the receiver has told you we're done with you, we'll call you when we're ready. You need to, you know, you know, you can't be out here with us. That's my understanding. I, I don't know uh, if you guys uh, understand the law a little different, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter because here at this company, I have to log it on duty. So it is what it is. Got offloaded, like I, like I said again, awesome dude. Um, got offloaded, and uh, he, he kind of uh, 
told me because I wrote down 8 a.m. I got there at 8 a.m. and uh, he said, well, we can't start paying you until 11 because that's what the paperwork says. So I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm not going to sit there and argue with them as well. He did sign my paperwork, but he did write down a little notation that he did not, you know, that there was uh, no delay. Uh, now, this kind of falls on the company because they're the ones that wanted me here at 8 a.m. So who should pay for the bill? Of course, my company should pay for the bill because, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a business and I, we don't do this for free. So somebody needs to uh, come up, come up off some money <laughs> and, uh, you know, do that that way. Now, let's go back to the BOLs. Guys, when you get pulled into a scale... A DOT officer asks you for the BOLs, do not ever give them the company's BOL. Give them the BOL of the load. Whatever the load's bill of laden is from its origin, from, from where it's been picked up, that is the, the bill of laden that you need to give them. You never, ever need to give them the bill of laden from your company. Why? Because sometimes there are discrepancies between times on loading side, loading side. And that just gives them the opportunity to say or to dig in more into whatever, uh, you know, the times are so they can compare it with your e-log. Now, I am not telling you to go and try to figure out how to cheat the system or none of that. What I'm telling you is do not ever give them the company's bill of laden if you have your own company's bill of laden see we have separate we have like i said the dr which is our company's bill of laden it kind of it's pretty much kind of tells you what you got and where you're going and stuff like that but then there's the original bol that you need to get over uh that you need to um to give the, uh, the 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 DOT officer, so give the DOT officer the original BOL. Don't don't incriminate yourself on anything, because as uh, you guys saw, you know that 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 video. I'll I'll link the video. Uh, I'll link the video back up here, and I'll. Uh, it's probably how you guys found me in the first place. Was that uh, DOT? inspection that I had with the Texas State Trooper and uh, if you really pay close attention he played he played his cards pretty dang awesome guys he played his cards pretty dang awesome he was very very uh, uh, professional polite but if you really look into the video and if you really pay attention this guy was looking at everything he was trying to find things out of place he wasn't just looking for discrepancies with the truck he was looking for maybe if I had something in the truck because he got pretty much I mean there's really no real reason why any DOT officer needs to get up on your step and kind of stick his head inside the window which he kind of did in the video now I'm not saying to sit there and argue with him nine times out of ten if you're polite back to him everything will be fine but if you sit there and argue with them, then things might be different. I know there's a lot of you guys that believe in, ah, uh, you know, these guys are tyrants and da 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 da, whatever. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. I just, I guess I'm just that much of a chicken or whatever. And I just rather just be polite, get it over with, and get on going down the road. Then we'll figure things out later. But they will definitely uh, try to get in there. And, and, and you can really see with it, he's really trying to find what I gathered more so after even after watching the video myself that he was trying to find a little bit try to find something illegal maybe in the truck illegal substance or something that didn't belong in the truck that's what I see that he was really after and um yeah so 
Uh, he was trying to figure that out so he can actually get me out of the truck and probably maybe search the truck on the inside. Search what you want, do what you want. Everything in here is legal. I don't carry anything illegal, any illegal things. Being that this is a hazmat load, um, well, not this particular one, but I mean, I, I, I do haul hazmat loads. There's a lot of things that I can't and can't have in the truck. Some of you guys get away with having certain things in the truck, quote unquote. I'm not going to say what exactly what it is, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you, you might think you're going to get away with it, but that one time that they catch you with that thing in your truck, that could be the one time that you lose everything. So, I don't know. I guess maybe because I live my, I, my life motto is so different than a lot of other people's though. I mean, I can't speak for everybody. And uh, of course, I'm a, I'm a very, very, and I passed up my exit. As I looked over, I passed them my exit. Good thing about this place, there's uh, clover leaves, so we'll just clover leaf the whole way around until we get back on track. But anyways, um, yeah, I, li I live my my life so different than a lot of other people, guys, and uh, and I get it. If you feel like you need to have protection in your truck, hey, go right ahead, do what you need to do. My motto has always been uh, not not that I don't not not that I do or do not. Uh, condone guns or nothing like that um, I've been shot before so I kind of don't like them but I was a I was a young kid that's a different story um, some of you guys know it already but I was a young kid when that happened and I couldn't have had one legally anyways even if yeah whatever so anyways back to how I live my life I live my life to a different model where if, if God wants me to go, no matter if I have what in my hand and no matter where I'm at in life and uh, all this, all the above, he is going to take me. That's just how I've always lived my life. Now that might be a little contradicting because of, uh, because of a video that I'm going to put up. I don't know if I've put it up by the time I put this one up or it's the next video. So I'm not going to talk too much about it. But I am being a little bit hypocritical, a little a little contradicting on, on that video. But you have to watch it. Um, if you watched it, well, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, as far as living life and, and trying to take care of myself a little more. But at the same time, you know, I do things like I go, like I'll be in a city and I'll go check out the city, and um, I'll walk around places that most people won't walk around, and you know, stuff like that. And I kind of take a little more risks than other people, you know, with riding my motorcycle, and and some people won't do stuff like that. You know, it's just uh, you live your life how you can, and I'm not. That's the whole point, guys. I'm not trying to tell you. How you need to leave your life and who you need to I mean and, and, and if you need to have something in your truck to protect yourself or not I, I'm not trying to I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what to do you do you you do what you're supposed to do I mean what you think you need to do for yourself period but myself I have so much more I have, I have so much to lose that I won't even have that in the truck so if that officer would have got in here and actually really dug in and started searching it and I would have had something like that in here that would have been I would have been done done and at the end of the day the reason I'm out here is for my kids and to feed the family I'm not really out here hundred percent for me now the part that the selfishness part about it that I am out here for me is because I like to explore and I'm out here seeing things that they'll never see or seeing things that they're not you know um, haven't had the opportunity to see it but you know that that DOT officer was was really trying to I think was really trying to look into something like that was really trying to find something something to grab a hold of but uh, we didn't give him the opportunity because I mean yes I was a little nervous but I didn't really act and I don't think I acted in it too much on the video um, just being polite taking care of business and whatever you know he uh let me go and uh, that was that 
thanks to that video, this channel has uh, grown to its uh, places where it's at right now. And uh, that's my uh, other thing of advice that I give you guys. If you do, even if you do, do even if you do, do YouTube or TikTok or whatever you do. Uh, we are in trying times, guys, and not even, and not just for uh, your safety. You know, when you're when you're out and about. Uh, that's why I always carry a GoPro in my pocket, and of course, phones, a camera. So just 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 dot your eyes and uh, cross your T's, guys, uh, and uh, record it if you have to. I know we have officers that watch this uh, channel on time to time, and I, I do 100% respect you guys, but there are there are some of you that are not out here uh, to be professional. There are some of you that are out here to on some type of vendetta that somebody messed with you when you were a kid or what have you. Some of you are not out here for the right reasons. Now, most of you are, and I respect police officers. I have a police officer in my family, my brother-in-law, he's a police officer. I, I respect him, and I respect his job. And I'm not going to ever tell you that you need to disrespect a police officer. But, even when you do find, go come across that one that's disrespectful, you have your camera, and you're recording him, and all you got to do is tell him you're recording him. That's it. That's all you got to do is tell him that you're recording him, and, and that's it. Um... And you're good. You're golden. But uh, try not to be, con I mean, not confrontational with them after you've told them that because then that can just make things worse or whatever. But yeah, guys, uh, protect yourself. Protect yourself out here on the road with uh, what you need to. As far as if you need to carry something with you, carry it. If that's what you think you need, do what you need to do. I don't think I need it, so I don't. But uh, take care of yourself. Make sure you're, you're you're recording as much as you can. If you got a dash cam, awesome, because you know all these crazies out here trying to mess us over and do scams and all this other stuff. So you gotta really. Uh, we're in a different time, definitely. So I always. Wherever I'm at, I always got at least two cameras with me. One is my phone, which is one of the best cameras out here. And the other one is a either a GoPro in my pocket or I'll have the DSLR or the uh, mirrorless camera, you know, the uh, what, you know the big camera. I'll have it in my hand. I, I'm always around, uh, I always got them with me. So, we're going we're gonna to record life. Alright guys, well hopefully you guys are enjoying the view from the hood up there. I uh, got these, like I said, these little awesome suction cup things. Uh, you can probably see one of them uh, right here on the top of my, which will be the top right corner of your, your uh, screen there. You'll be able to see one that's hooked up. And the other one is the one that's on the camera that's on the hood. Very, very good equipment. Um, I'll see. I'm, I'm going to try to get on the Amazon link thing. And uh, so I can uh, link it to you. Show you guys what I'm talking about. And I might do a video. I'll just probably do a video or review on this certain thing. There's not a lot of things. There, well, I don't do really. I don't do videos. Or reviews. But there's. Uh, every once in a while there's something that really I really love. Which was that. You know like the electric XP. The, the, the e-bike. That I don't have in the truck right now. And I got something exciting about that too. Uh, well, exciting for me, I guess, um, about the electric, about the uh, the e-bike. So, pretty exciting, uh, something coming up for me. And um, I'll share it with you guys when it happens. And uh, that this, this suction cup thing, it, it, you can mount pretty much anywhere. And it's, it's got some power. So, we'll probably do a little review on that uh, here soon enough. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to put it in the wind and try to get back to Texas. I got spring break coming up, so I got days I'm gonna take off. Truck, I need to put it in the shop, get the, the overhead done. Uh, so we're gonna get that done, get that taken care of, and uh, continue on doing what we do. There goes a Mr. Sheriff County Mountie just went by. <laughs> Shout out to all the County Mounties out there, all the sheriffs. 
and all the law enforcement and everybody that, that's out here to, to, to really truly help us. But that being said, guys, thank you guys again for joining me one more time. Don't forget to be kind to one another. Help anybody needs help. Anybody contemplate suicide, 1-800-273-8255. Military men and women, thank you so much for your service. See you guys on the next video. Peace. We're out of here.